Hi, Malad and Simon. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's symposium conversation. Um, I'm so excited to share your collaboration for the symposium with our audiences on Monday. And I'm delighted that we could find time to just get together and talk about what has transpired and the exchanges that you've, that you've had for this collaboration. And um, I think a great way to start off is just Simon, if you could tell me a little bit about the Fulbright triptych and the details that you submitted to the symposium. <clears throat> um, well, I mentioned in one of my notes to you that um, there is an American adage um, or saying which goes something like, um, there are no second acts in American life. And this comes supposedly from a statement of the writer, F. Scott Fitzgerald. And basically the idea there is that um, he thought, I, I believe he thought that the American mind could not take in um, more than one time around or one feeling of enthusiasm or one moment. And that there was something in the American um, spirit that um, couldn't accept this idea or couldn't deal with it. <clears throat> so my painting um, was done on a Fulbright grant in uh, beginning in 1971, it took three years to do in and was completed in 1974. It was first exhibited at Stemfley Gallery in 1975, got a lot of response. And I think from that response, <clears throat> a lot of things opened up for me, including um, a grant to go to Rome, to the American Academy in Rome. Um, the painting was bought by uh, the Palmer Museum of Art. Um, and for some reason or other, I, I could never understand this, but the museum never exhibited the painting in the course of time since. So, but because of a book that came out on this painting in 2011, um, th this is a book of essays, 45 essays on this painting by different writers, such as um, Anthony Doerr and Jhumpa Lahiri and John Russell. Um, there was a traveling exhibit and between the book, the traveling exhibit and a really um, wonderful write-up in the New York Times by Roberta Smith, a lot of people got to respond to this painting and it had the second life that F. Scott Fitzgerald said it couldn't have. At some point in this second life, there was an exhibit in New Jersey at um, the Visual Arts Center of New Jersey. Who should visit this exhibit but Milad? And he could take the he could take that part from me. Yeah, thanks for the wonderful information. So I uh, I was really looking forward to uh, to see this painting, the full retreat triptych like life. I've seen a lot of pictures and um, like from catalogs, but I haven't had a chance since like to see it from like close by. And then luckily we had a opportunity. There was like the New Jersey Art Museum was exhibiting the art. So I, I couldn't wait and I took the train, I went there and uh, and so it was not only Fulbright triptych, but also other, paint, other paintings by Simon, but I was very interested in, um, in Fulbright triptych because, uh, well, I, I see a lot of subjects and themes in the painting, like 
um, as I mentioned, like a mother and a child, a window, like many wonderful objects and a career and a father. So I was very struck by, by the painting and um, I was reflecting at the painting in front of it for like an hour or so. I was concentrating on every single detail and trying to be very curious of brush strokes. And there's a wonderful miniature in the painting which reminds me of my Persian heritage. I was looking at it. Oh, yes, yes. And yes. all this, uh, I'm, I've, I've been fortunate enough to know Simon, Rene, and Simona personally too. So I was, uh, I was trying to travel, time travel into that painting and say, okay, okay, Simona as my mentor. And she was like uh, probably one or two year old at that no, time. Nine months, nine, nine months. months. Oh, nine, nine oh. months, yeah. <laughs> nine months, it was really, it was really wonderful to see that painting and to connect with that time. And I say, well, I was probably not in coming to this world yet, but I was like looking at the window and it was so realistic that I could travel through the window, like all the way to the back of them. And I was trying to kind of do a sightseeing of this village in the window. So I was totally have a different world of this painting. And, and for one hour, and I didn't know how time passed, I was looking at the painting, like, like every single details and, uh, so, and then what was really interesting for me was the windows because also as a child, since, since I was uh, like one year old, I used to go there and stand in front of the window and then stare at outside. I feel like a strong connection with the windows somehow because during the civil war, we couldn't go outside because we had to, it was like pandemic, we had to stay inside all the time. And I was looking at the outside of the window, like dreaming and hoping one day I'll be able to go out. Wow. So that windows, whatever, and luckily, I think some of Simon's painting, the subjects are all windows, which yeah. I can really connect. So in this painting, it was not only windows, but like uh, the other, other refugee, I really miss my family. So I saw a mother and a child in the painting. I saw a career. I saw Simon like as a father and I saw everything in the painting, my culture, which was a Persian miniature. So mm -hmm. it was for me like a whole package. That's why I connected to that work. Uh, if, I, if I could just say two things about what you've just said. Um, <clears throat> one is that you mentioned that you looked at the painting for an hour. Um, I, I am very interested in how long people take to look at a work of art. I'm not sure how much it means. I, I'm really not sure. But Sometimes you see people look at a painting or a drawing for 15 seconds, five minutes, 25 minutes, 60 minutes. And it's very, very interesting. I've, see, I've actually, when the painting was on exhibit at the German consulate in New York, some days I would hang out there but not say who I am, just sit on the, in the corner and watch people. And I actually saw people look at that painting for an hour and I couldn't get over it. It was just amazing. The, other, the second thing that you said, I think is very interesting. You said you're talking about looking through the windows. So you could almost say, looking through the windows is like the window is a portal that takes you somewhere else. Okay. I actually think the pictures are windows. So the pictures are portals that take you somewhere else. So for instance, the miniature that you described or there are children's drawings or there are reproductions of paintings, the way I see it is you could walk into the picture of a child's drawing and walk through the picture and come out in the back behind the picture. And you would either be inside the picture or somewhere else. I wonder what you think of that. Yeah, that's a very good question. I think that's very hard to hunt or too because since the reason I was uh, 
I was looking at the window because they were realistic. It was because it was like a full size painting. So the human beings appear as they were sitting in front of me. So if it was like a smaller, <coughs> I would have probably spent probably less time or I would have had different idea, but it was like lifetime, I would see like the resonance. And as I believe in the energies, so when you painted that painting uh, back in 1971, so that energy stays with that painting, I believe. So whenever who, whoever looks at the painting, that energy like bounce back to it. So all those like uh, everything that is in the painting is like coming to you, like right at you for focus. <clears throat> so that's what I felt when I see the painting. It was not like, uh, I was not curious as an artist myself to say, okay, this is like yellow color. But I was like that, I was really attracted to that energy that was like bouncing back to from the artist's to the, I mean, if we look at the other artist painting today, even from what I think few centuries ago, same thing, if the energy is still there or a piece of music, I mean, Beethoven's like Fifth Symphony or any piece that we like, we listen to, however, we are like a few centuries ahead now. And, but it's still it's like something stable that's called like, I believe that's energy and that like bounces back to us. And then we feel that energy that the artist was working on it at that time. Well, that's a that's fantastic uh, uh, response because um, I teach a class in art appreciation, which you you've visited and attended, and sometimes um, people ask why certain paintings live outside their time, and <clears throat> let's say it's a religious painting. Let's say you go up to the Metropolitan Museum and you're looking at the paintings from 1400, 1500 that are religious. So I always think that the reason is that there's an abstraction in the painting, something that transcends the moment, that's not about <clears throat> an incident. But I think actually I'm going to amend what I have been saying because of what you have just said. I think it's the energy that's in the painting that makes it transcend. What, it, what that energy is, X, X, I don't know. But if the energy is there and it does transcend, um, that's as good as you could get. Yeah, actually, it's the same thing when we have a letter from our parents or from someone whom we really adore or love. Like if we read the letter like for a thousand times after they pass away or like keep the same thing up, <laughs> the same, the same like sense of love and energy or, or sense of sadness or grief appears into the body as if their letter was written like yesterday and the time didn't like when. So that's what for me to like, I just was there in 1971 imagining myself and to being with you in the studio and then working on this painting together. So that's what I viewed it as an artist. For me, it was like a living that experience together. That's why it took me like, even I think I was there for two and a half hours in general, but mostly I spent the time on like triptych, which was like, a try. I tried to paint it, this with you all the way back into 1971 and feel all that energy coming to me. So I was viewed like, but not as an artist, but like, okay, what it, this painting tells me. So that's what I felt like a very close connection with everything that was in the painting. Well, <clears throat> perhaps this is the last thing that I could think to say, <clears throat> and maybe Audrey could come in, but um, <clears throat> I have done many works of art and you must have been familiar with many of them. And <clears throat> I was very surprised that you chose this one, but I, now I can see why. Well, thank you both for this amazing conversation. <clears throat> I think the best conversations are the ones where I don't have to speak. So this is really like, I'm, I'm learning so much, it's so inspiring. I just wanted to finish off just with one final question and um, regarding the score which um, Simon, you wrote to me about, and Malad, you also wrote to me about, and I've just been kind of perusing it and looking over it, just fascinated by 
this new sort of medium, which really gets to the heart of what this collaboration is all about. Um, and I would love if, if Malad and Simon, if you have comments as well, to speak more about where this idea came from and how you were inspired to integrate the visual or the visual aspects of the painting in the score in this amazing way, which I will be incorporating in the premiere video. So people, our audience will be seeing this because it's really unique, but Malad, I'm eager to hear your thoughts. Sure, thanks for this question. Actually, I've been suffering from my synesthesia for a long time <clears throat> because when I see color, I hear music. When I hear music, I see color. Wow. When I when I smell something like a fragrance, I see like uh, the memories, like uh, I see music. So I say like, how can I, how can I express my feelings through music? Also showing my brain what's going on in my brain to the audience. Which when I saw like the painting, the windows in, in full bright, I saw music and that a sky that was there. So what the music that I heard. And I saw, I just put it there as it, as it appeared in my brain. So that's what I wanted to, I wanted to combine this both medium art and music to, to be able to show like, I, I'm still, I'm not saying that I'm 100% successful, but I still work in terms of how can I sort of uh, write whatever appears in my brain as a synesthesia, like write exactly copy the same thing. That was the good start that I started with Simon's painting and it appeared to me like, for me, when I see a painting, I see like a symphony or a piece of music as my synesthesia or vice versa. When I hear a symphony, I see colors. So that was the first step that I started. And, and luckily I've, I've, I've heard a lot of good responses because um, I, I haven't, I don't remember anyone doing this before. So, so it was like pushing the limit beyond and, um, and trying to be kind of a little bit brave to, to speak about that synesthesia and put it into music and change it into that particular. And uh, it started with, uh, with, the, with actually with uh, paper and I still have the sketches here. I wrote it with hand and I think I sent you. So I was like, I was doing all this, uh, working on this window and, and all this, it was a mess. Like if you enter my room, it was like paper all over with pictures. I was like totally working like a mad, mad man. And, uh, and I, I don't know how to put everything into that project because I go like, oh, Fulbright triptych is like sending me a lot of vibes and energy. How can I put this into one score? And we have like very short time, 10 minutes. So like paper all over my room, like pictures. And then finally I said, well, let's put it into that, that particular subject. And that's, that's how it came to be. Uh, if I could just say one thing here, I, I, please, you should, this is your baby, but I must tell you this. <clears throat> I met you about a week ago. <clears throat> we were at a uh, performance and you said to me, um, I have one more day to do the um, writing, the composition, the score, and then I'll send it to you. And I said to you, um, well, you know, I don't read music. You know, I, I don't read music. And you, you said, you'll be able to understand this. Okay. And then Wednesday, three days after, five days after, five days after, you sent me the score. And I couldn't stop laughing. Because, <laughs> it, you know, I just, you were so funny. It was a riot. And then I understood what you meant. <laughs> I, and then we spoke and you said, um, well, I was telling the truth because you were, you were reading your painting, right? Yes, that's right. Very funny, <laughs> extremely funny. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm very glad you mentioned. I've been working on this painting for like a few months now for this piece. And for me, the challenge was how to put it into like a, the program Sibelius to represent it as it is, as it appears. So that's, uh, so I'm glad like this is the score we all can read. Amazing. That's really incredible. Yeah. Um, well, I wanna just be mindful of the time uh, and 
thank you both for all of these insights that you're sharing. And I, I have a feeling I'm going to get a lot of emails from the people who watch uh, or stay in touch with our symposium releases, because this is really extraordinary. And I'm really grateful to both of you for all the time and care and attention that you've put into this collaboration. And I hope that this can be somehow continued in the future or built upon. And um, it's just such a pleasure to speak with both of you. Oh, well, <clears throat> thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, looking forward to discover Simon's other painting too, like this. Um, Audrey, I, I think that your program is um, really amazing and imaginative and um, uh, very poetic. And thank you. Thank you so much.